I'm Philip Morris from Proctors and the host of this segment on the arts. Now it's really the arts and the creative economy because our guest today is really doing something in the creative economy, Laban Koblenz, founder of the Troy Center for Gravity. Thank you for being with us, Laban. Thank you for having me. Center for Gravity, what the heck's that? <laughs> Black hole? No. It is, it's, it's not the only planetary body, but we think it's kind of the, the attractor for uh, young people in the capital region. That's, that's kind of the goal we've set out. Um, this whole thing started when the uh, Rensselaer County Industrial Development Agency came to me and said, would you start an incubator in downtown Troy? And I said, no, uh, we've got enough incubators, but what I would like to address is we have this sort of irony in our region that we attract a very high caliber of young professionals to our schools. We educate them to the nth degree we get them addicted to laboratories and st artistic studios and all this sort of thing, and then we release them. And there's the perception that we do very little to support them. So what we end up with is what I call a Pac-Man economy. So any economic sector has high risk people, low risk people, et cetera. The piece that we're missing, the piece of the pie that's cut out, is when we let our young professionals go off because they don't perceive themselves to have a center of gravity here. They're the ones that will take the biggest risks. They don't have the kids and jobs and the high income expectations. They can live on a loaf of bread and a jar of peanut butter for three weeks, and they're that committed. So, and they're also accustomed to being taught, which is also something we lose as we get older. So if we don't serve that, that group, we're missing something. So a center of gravity, the way to attract them. So how have you defined the center of gravity at this point? Since it's new, we should really be telling people. Um, how to define, I, the definition came by listening. I asked a large group of young people who were newly out of university, what would keep you? What would make you want to stay? And so it really came down to a few things. Um, it wasn't just business incubation. These were entrepreneurs, but some of them had jobs. And the question was, do I want to stay? Because it's my weekend activities, my evening activities. We've got great pubs, but where do I get the sort of intellectual stimulation? So we tried to do a couple of things. One um, is to really not focus just on entrepreneurs, but on the whole segment, because the theory was if we serve young professionals, we end up serving everybody. The old guys like you and me have our niche because it, the young professionals are interested in the most stimulating things out there. And by serving them, we serve everybody. The second thing was, um, in addition to the social activities, um, how do we, uh, well, what came out of it was a question of a maker space. So if you know the maker space concept, that's um, maybe about uh, six years old or so. Um, started kind of in the IT space and a little bit in Europe. It's been uh, the first ones in the US are uh, NYC Resistor in Brooklyn and Noisebridge in San Francisco, which both started probably uh, 2008. So this is a relatively young movement. The capital region didn't have one. And uh, what we're finding is the capital region really needed one. It's a great fit. It's growing faster than any of the rest on record. Yeah, well, part of what I observed at the opening and part of what I observed working with you so far is that the opportunity, calling it a maker space is a good, is a good description, I think, because the opportunity is for people to watch one another mm -hmm. and interrelate skills. So mm -hmm. what I observed in the one hour of the opening were an electronic project that was accentuated and supported by good word working, which also happened to be possible in the space, and right. was also accentuated by someone who was dealing with sound, right. and all of a sudden they were inventing something else. So right. it's playful right. in the best sense of the word, right. you know, in the, in not in a, a waste of time sense, but that sense of, uh, how could maybe this happen? Well, right. why don't we try that? It's wonderful. Right. We had a young woman give a lecture a couple of weeks, uh, actually a couple of months ago, that illustrates that. She talked about the intersection of craft and technology. So she addressed three media, paper, fabric, and yarn, but in the context of technology. So what's the density of iron filings you need to grind down to put into paint to make something conductive so you can light a circuit on a piece of clothing? Um, how, do you excel, uh, how do you crochet an accelerometer? She really had a video on how do you do that. So it was this question of, how do you intersect disciplines? And some of that will be absolutely whimsy, and others, other parts will turn out to be 
a really smart invention that can be commercialized and made into a company and jobs and all the other traditional sort of economic measures. Yeah, it's really wonderful. So how, what brought you to all of this? Okay, IDA asked you to do something, but you have been in nuclear science, you have been in a variety of things, talk about that, but what brought you to this? Well, there are a couple of things. I think um, I have to give some credit to my daughter um, for two reasons. One is that I was watching her at, uh, my daughter was at that time a student at Emma Willard. And um, she was um, in the throes of figuring out where do I go, wanna go for university? And she was talking about business, but she had an idea she wanted to make something of. Um, and sh the idea was great, but she didn't have a mechanical engineer she didn't have an investor. She didn't have any of those pieces. So I was, I had worked um, as an executive at RPI with a lot of the tech transfer operations reporting to me. So I knew a bit about startups and I was also working on startup companies in the uh, IT space and in the biotech space. And so the question was, what are the ingredients? How do you hook people up? How do you make that network occur? particularly when it's the non-traditional environment. So I know what an incubator is like, and an incubator really tries to provide the services, the legal services, the accounting, all the pieces that a, that a young company needs in order to gain a foothold and grow, including the investment. But this was more than that. This was saying, how do you just let people network? And what I've seen is if you get a mix from Siena, for example, they're going to be a bit more, uh, their center for innovation and entrepreneurship is gonna be a bit more focused on service models, service businesses, innovation in that space. RPI, of course, Rensselaer is going to be focused on engineering and gadgets and pharmaceuticals and new bioscience and all that. Um, why not bring them into a similar environment in which they can learn from and stimulate each other? So did your daughter's product ever become something she it's in process, Tangible? in process. She oh. filed a patent um, in March. Um, she's heading off to university now, and she's in the process, the company is a New York State company, and she's in the process of um, taking it forward. What is the uh, invention? What is uh, the? the invention. She, so she, this is patented. It's you know, patented. It's, can, we can, can talk about you. it. Yeah, it's <laughs> no, it's, a, um, it's actually a, uh, a new um, drink platform, so to speak. What it is, um, she, she was frustrated by the idea that when you mix certain drinks, they, the freshness of the one ingredient is, is diminished. Well, the freshness of the ingredients is diminished if you mix them together. So if you, what you end up with is either a really low quality drink that's been sort of pre-mixed, or you end up with um, uh, you know, just not being able to, uh, going to somebody and having them make it for you and spending an arm and a leg. So this is essentially a can model that instead of a pop top working on a lever principle is a circular uh, uh, ramp. Therefore, when you twist it together, you can create an opening be between two preset uh, pieces of the can. You shake it, you automatically have a perfectly mixed drink, and there you go. Oh, that's really cool. That reminds me of the uh, original uh, canned Guinness. Exactly. That had the little uh, exactly. carbon mm -hmm. on the pop top so that mm -hmm. it would Give the Fizz, head. Give the it would give head. that extra dark brown head. Yeah, similar yeah, yeah. concept. Yeah, yeah, that's very cool. Uh, they don't do it anymore. No. Uh, because they're now doing it in bottles, and they right. seem like it's okay. I guess I don't know. I, I kind of liked it when you <laughs> we heard it. You could tell it was happening. Yeah, right? you knew it was genuine. <laughs> yeah, right, right. right. That's and it's interesting, right? It's yeah. A little bit different. Worth the extra fifty cents. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Get that well, that's extra that's very cool. That's very cool. Yeah, thank you. Um, so, what do you envision next with this? Um, it's funny, we're getting uh, a couple of, well, getting pulled in a lot of directions. I think one of the things we're seeing is the amazing fit this was for this region. People talk about this region as being uh, statistically high in PhDs. I like to just say we've got more geeks, not just PhDs, but uh, 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 people of all sorts, very creative, uh, more geeks per square inch than probably any region in the country. So this concept of a maker space and then all the other initiatives that also do uh, social activities and so forth built around this, um, this really is a terrific fit for the capital region. But beyond that, um, we're getting requests for people who say, could you come to North Adams and help us with something similar in Massachusetts? Could you do this in the Tri-Cities, uh, Raleigh-Durham area in North Carolina? 
Um, uh, could you do it in Amman, Jordan? Could you do it in Yemen? I, I'm getting, we had a tour um, about, uh, I don't know, it might have been six weeks ago, where we had a delegation from Afghanistan. And um, it was very interesting. It was uh, maybe five uh, Afghan uh, leaders of various sorts. We had the only female mayor uh, of a town mm. in Afghanistan wow. with a couple of people from the U.S. State Department um, visiting. And when they started out looking at the makerspace, um, the translation meant they weren't very impressed. They said, yes, we have machine shops in Kabul also. And then we described it and said, no, this is a member-driven club. It is self-governing. Our principles are very sim simple. Be excellent to each other and radical application of common sense. And they started to see what it meant as a community of creative people coming together in, in ways that allowed each person to find their niche. And we couldn't get them out of there. They, we ruined their schedule. They stayed way over. And I was seeing tears in the eyes of a number of these people thinking of what they could do with this um, in, a, in an Afghan context. So when you say what's next, I think there are certainly uh, businesses operating already out of the, out of the uh, space. We have tinkerers. We have uh, an, an artist I'm meeting with tomorrow who wants to do murals through this, all the way through the space, focused on technology and, and, and uh, how you give sort of creative expression to that visually. Um, so there's much more to be built here. But then the question is, how do you make it even more sustainable, perhaps by, I don't know, franchising it, be, by, by giving duplication to it um, in, other, in other locations? So now you have been, you, Laban, have been an employee most of your life. This is, a, this yeah. is, your, this is a kind of entrepreneurial breakout for you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I had a friend who um, was very curious about what I was doing. In fact, he advised me not to do it, said it was a dumb idea. And, um, he lives out of town, he used to be a New Yorker, and he came back after we'd been working on this for about four months, and he saw the explosion of activity and how successful it was, and he said, I'm sorry, you were right, <laughs> it's great. But he also said, Laban, I know why this is working, and I said, why? He said, you're Amish. Well, that's not quite true, but I, I grew up Amish Mennonite. I grew up in a, in a community where um, doing things with one's hands, and just doing was very, very important, and community was very important. And he said, what you've got here is an ongoing barn raising. So. Yes, I think um, for my own experience, I've been very heavily involved in advanced communica uh, in communications and advanced technology for most of my life. Um, nuclear inspector, working for the International Atomic Energy Agency. I'd worked for the uh, nuclear safety um, in, uh, in, in uh, 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 the West Coast. And um, so this was new for me, but I was already moving into the entrepreneurial thing myself. My experience in working with the startups that were coming out of Rensselaer Polytechnic mm -hmm. Institute had sort of made me catch the bug a bit. And I had in the back of my mind this thing sticking in my craw that said, how do you, we do such a great job on our university campuses of creating, if you like, centers of gravity, hubs. But the kids that I knew that were already in the job market and who were out there incubating themselves in their kitchens and basements and backyards, they didn't have that any longer. And it didn't work for them to go to the university campuses because they were graduates, they had the diploma, it was time to move on. So the question was, how do you do something for them? And I wanted to address that. So I'm very happy with that. Um, yeah, that's really great. That and you know, it's interesting because that's a reality in lots of arenas. So a simple example, but a singer leaves yeah. campus uh, and suddenly, it's there's so little opportunity. Right. It's frightening. Right. Um, you know, so we proctors and my in my life, I probably started five choral organizations just right. because there was this energy that didn't have a place to go, right. and you have to invent it. You have to just start it's, from scratch and go. It's so true. And and what you point out, I, I should say this also. One of the things that we're doing for these young people is just letting them know more about what's here. So we've developed really great partnerships. I mean, Proctor's has been extremely supportive. That's a very, very good example. Um, we've got the Art Center of the Capital Region two doors down. So we're not teaching ceramics classes. We're saying raise awareness of what is there. We've got a, a, an older gentleman running a photo center who's got a dark room and matting equipment down six blocks down the street from us. Go use his. Don't duplicate what is there. 
integrate your creative sort of uh, stuff into the rest of the community because that's how you sort of build um, in a way that uh, you know a rising ship um, a rising tide serves all ships. This is going to be great. It is great. Thank it's going to be great. You're going to do great with it. <laughs> Laban, thank you for joining us. I'm Philip Morris. Laban Koblitz was our guest today from the Troy Center for Gravity, a new workers, a new maker space that's doing great. Thank you for joining us here at Impact. Timing? Proctors, bringing the best in arts, education, and entertainment.